Welcome uh, to this session of organizational behavior. It's chapter two in the book we are using for this class. When we talk about organizational behavior or OB, it essentially uh, is concerned with uh, finding and analyzing the variables that affect employee productivity, absence, turnover, deviance, or corporate uh, or professional citizenship. And in order to better analyze these variables within a working environment, the business leaders and the managers need to understand the diverse nature of the global marketplace and the changed face of the workforce. So primarily in today's session, we will be looking into the major forms of workforce diversity. At the same time, we'll be covering different stereotypes and understand how they function within any organizational settings. And then we'll be looking into the different abilities uh, of uh, human workforce. And finally, uh, and more importantly, we will be looking into the different ways we can efficiently manage diversity um, in a professional setting. So this slide talks about two levels of diversity that the book covers. At first, we are looking into surface level diversity. Surface level diversity talks about um, the initial uh, characteristics that one can see and perceive when they're first meeting a person or they're first interact at the, at the first uh, interacting with a person. Uh, for example, we can perceive that uh, people from similar work and education and social and socioeconomic background um, will have uh, similar aspirations, similar likings, dislikings, and similar ways of looking into the world and uh, um, any profession. Uh, and we tend to put people in different boxes according, according to that surface level diversity. But on the contrary, if you look into the book, you will understand that there are cases where we see that people from diverse um, and dissimilar backgrounds um, in education, in economy, in society, um, they can share uh, similar interests, they can share similar values and uh, ability and uh, the synergy uh, to work uh, for a better um, environment, for better profitability within uh, an organization. So that thing where people are sharing um, their ideas, when people are sh sharing their um, ethical behavior, uh, their preferences, that's deep level diversity. So the surface level diversity also put forward another factor which is very controversial sometimes, which is discrimination in the workplace. Now, technically, discrimination um, is a good thing when you are differentiated between uh, your workforce, uh, you are rewarding your efficient workers, uh, at the same time, you are reprimanding the ones who are kind of lagging behind. But things get a bit tricky when you are doing this kind of discrimination on unfair basis. Uh, you are doing it without a sense or practice of equity or justice. So refusal to recognize individual differences and uh, is harmful to the organizations and the employees. When you are doing this uh, discrimination based on uh, some of the hunches you had before or some of the typical um, ideas you heard before about certain group of people or people from certain backgrounds, then that's not a good practice uh, in any kind of organization. In many cases, it can be legal and definitely unethical and 
eventually will result in poor performance for the organization. So this um, uh, exhibit in this slide talks about different uh, type of discrimination and uh, uh, there are different examples that has been elaborated um, in the book. So let's first talk about the biographical characteristics uh, of the workforce and how they're relevant to organizational behavior. So by biological characteristics, uh, we mean the personal uh, information. That those are objective and th those can be easily obtained from any personal records. And variations in these can be basis for discrimination. For example, let's first talk about age. The U.S. workforce is aging, not only U.S. workforce. If we look into the most of the Western uh, developed nations, we will be looking into uh, an aging workforce everywhere. So that's a common problem we all share. Now, we also unfortunately share something else. There is a common trend across different industries that the aging uh, people who are in the workforce are more susceptible to towards uh, being laid off first. Uh, they are first in line to be sacked or fired when we are looking into cost cutting, we are looking into getting rid of uh, human resources. But on the because the perception is that they are not that efficient, they are not that productive. But on the contrary, there are studies that we talked about in the book that show that the turnover and absenteeism rates are actually lower among old workers, older workers, and age is not in no way associated with lower productivity. Similarly, if we look into sex or gender, we also see that there are no consistent, uh, there are no proof uh, of uh, male-female differences when it comes to problem-solving ability, analytical skills, competitive drives, motivation, um, or any other related workforce uh, criteria. But what we have seen in commercial industries, uh, in uh, the entertainment, in sports, across the region, across the world, that the women earn, earn less than men for the same positions and have fewer professional opportunities. Now, race and ethnicity are huge factors. Uh, we have seen within any kind of organizations, these can factor in. Uh, and these can be related to the initial factors we talked about before. Um, this can be related to the employee productivity, turnover, the citizen, the corporate citizenship. For example, the African Americans and the Hispanics, according to the book, perceive higher level of discrimination in the workplace. And in many cases, rightly so, there are proofs and case studies that uh, um, there, there are some sort of uh, discrimination. And, but in most of the way, people perceive the workforce belonging to these minority groups, uh, perceive that they are being discriminated. And then comes the issue of disability. There are different laws. If we f primarily focus on the US laws, there are laws that defines which kind of workforce or which kind of people can claim disability and what kind of impairment, both physical or mental, can be um, declared um, uh, disability and how they should be treated. Uh, those uh, people with impairment should be treated in the regular workforce. Now, there are biases against those with mental impairment that uh, they may not be as uh, efficient as the people without a diagnosed men mental impairment. And uh, managers can go by that. And that can create a lot of tension, a lot of discrimination, uh, and a lot of bad press for the organization which are practicing, organizations which are practicing those. 
we did talk about um, the uh, ethnicity we did talk about uh, gender um, here there is another interesting thing and I kinda don't agree with the first um, characteristics 100% with the book. Here um, there are studies that talks about, according to the book, that a tenure is a good measure. So if we find a certain people, a certain workforce is working for a certain organization for a longer period of time, we assume that uh, they're happy with them. So there is a positive correlation between a tenure or the longevity of work uh, and job satisfaction. But at the same time, it may not be the case, and this is where I differ from the book, because a people can be in a certain job if the, there are absence of opportunities. So he or she may not be happy with the job, he or she may not be satisfied with the professional outcome, but if there is no nothing better to do, of course, they will be stuck with that job. So there, 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 there is a, a sense of a, a problem um, that I have with the uh, with the writers of the book here. So it's open for um, understanding and open for interpretation. And I will hope that you can go and see the case studies that we'll be talking more after the class related to this uh, topic and also look into the chapter readings and can decide uh, on yourself. Uh, and then uh, there's a big factor of, of religion and more uh, increasingly what we are seeing here, for example, uh, there are discriminations not only in US, in many other places where the religious minorities uh, are finding themselves uncomfortable um, in the workplace, uh, in the social setting, uh, in many uh, public and private uh, settings uh, where they're working and they're interacting with other groups. Uh, for example, here in the book, they specifically talk about the Muslims in US where they are facing a kind, different kind of discriminations according to the different right groups uh, of the Muslims in this country. We did talk about sexual orientation and gender identity. It further clarifies it. Now, for the next uh, couple of, uh, like several slides, we also talk about ability. So now, ability is an individual's current capacity to perform various, various tasks in a job. So primarily, according to the book, there can be two types of abilities, intellectual and physical. When we talk about physical, um, intellectual abilities, we are primarily looking into thinking, uh, reasoning and problem solving. So a person's ability to do these things, perform these things. And uh, most societies place a high value on intelligence. And uh, people will be paying higher salary or higher compensation for the pe uh, intellectual workforce, intelligent work workforce. This exhibit talks about the different dimensions of intellectual ability. Uh, it covers number aptitude, uh, verbal comprehension, uh, we talk about inductive reasoning, we talk about memory, we talk about spatial visualization, and related to these different dimensions of intellectual abilities, there are different specific jobs, and certain people um, according to the hiring managers, human resources, we look into that. They look for, for example, they, if they're looking for accountant, or definitely they will be looking for people with number aptitudes who are better at it, who are better in crunching numbers. So this is very important when we are looking into ensuring diversity within a workforce. We are looking into ensuring that there is no discrimination in the hiring, this is also very important to know that whether or not the people with right abilities are hired for the jobs at hand. Now, when we talk about physical abilities, um, this is something um, has to do with physical, uh, physical stuff. We are looking into strength, we are looking into stamina. Uh, 
and uh, we are looking into flexibility of uh, the human body that is very very important for certain tasks this uh, exhibit uh, 2.3 in the book talks about the different uh, strength factors uh, flexibility factors we're talking about dynamic strength trunk strength we're talking about body coordination balance stamina and these are also related with certain tasks certain jobs and similar to the intellectual abilities uh, the human resources and the managers certainly needs to look into what kind of uh, strength uh, or physical abilities are needed for the jobs at hand. Now it's very important um, to recognize uh, the uh, rec to have a formulation, a better formulation of a policy that recognizes uh, different abilities of the workforce. At the same time, we also need to understand that uh, while we focus on certain abilities, it's also crucial to accommodate different disabilities. Now, it's very possible that a person can be physically disabled, but at the same time, his or her mental ability can be very, very um, higher um, than related to uh, superior, very, very superior than others who are actually the candidates and uh, uh, in, the, in a certain job. So a manager needs to look into those um, characteristics, those attributes when they are hiring um, any, any people for a certain job. So a person should not be discriminated, should not be uh, cut off from the final list just because he or she has a declared um, disability, physical or mental. Those really need to go through uh, in-depth uh, analysis, um, those applications. So that's very important. So that gives us the transition to the final learning objective of today's session and the chapter that we are, that we are looking into. And that talks about diversity management. Because by diversity management, we understand a process uh, that uh, is important for the managers uh, to perform that ensures um, that uh, that everyone is more aware and sensitive of the needs and the differences of the others. And uh, it's, it's important for us to understand that diversity uh, being integrated uh, in an in a organization is uh, more successful uh, when it's uh, ev everyone's business and not just for certain groups or, or certain employees. This slide talks about how diversity can be integrated within an organization. We are talking about attracting, selecting, developing and retaining diverse employees, uh, not just for one group, but diversity within the groups and outside the groups. And there has to be some effective diversity programs. So let's uh, try to elaborate on that. So when we talk about diversity within a workforce and how the business leaders or the managers need to ensure it, we definitely need to first ensure that there is a long-term commitment to it, that a diverse workforce is part of a long-term strategy um, for any kind of organization. This is not just a checkbox that we need to uh, check. Um, because we need to comply with certain um, requirements of a country's law uh, or a certain industry's regulations. We need to make sure that the target recruiting message is uh, specific uh, uh, to different demographic groups. We also need to ensure that the hiring is bias-free and definitely um, the idea should be to create a positive diverse working climate. Now, while we are ensuring a diverse uh, environment, uh, a bias-free environment for hiring multiple background of people within the workforce, 
We also need to understand that for certain tasks, we need similar people with similar level of uh, abilities. So imagine you are trying to focus on um, uh, solving um, higher computer programming problem for developing some sort of uh, uh, multi-user applications uh, for uh, you know real-time interaction. Now while doing it definitely the hiring managers or the leaders of a company should be looking for people with uh, higher uh, cognitive skills in programming, um, higher performance in programming uh, related tasks. Now if we then try to make sure that the company is diverse in that kind of particular task or that kind of group by including people with certain physical uh, strengths and abilities and uh, kind of limited or zero uh, programming abilities then that that is not the whole goal or the whole objective of uh, managing diversity uh, efficiently uh, within a certain uh, company or uh, organization so that definitely has to be cleared and that definitely needs to be um, mentioned uh, in the strategy of hiring for ensuring diversity. So when we talk about these effective diversity programs run by the managers, the leaders, uh, definitely we need to ensure several things. One is uh, the legal framework. The managers need to understand within which framework of rules and regulations they have to perform their hiring, they have to strat how, how to strategize for the long-term scenarios, um, so they, they need to know the laws. Second is definitely they have to internalize the potential opportunities of a diverse workforce. They need to understand that without discriminating people um, related to diversity, it actually pays off in the long term. And that's something they should believe in. And then definitely uh, there should be a facilitation within the company uh, that foster personal development of the workforce so that the people can excel both at the work and the social life. So eventually our goal should be by understanding these uh, different factors of diversity that the people, the managers, the leaders should be looking beyond the traditional stereotypical ideas about different groups, different ideologies, different uh, uh, biases that the society provides and should be looking for the eventual sustainable profitability of the company and the society and uh, they also should respect others, um, their differences um, and uh, their multiplicity within the global workforce and those practices, if those can be internalized, can certainly uh, result in a very profitable uh, professional working environment. So that's pretty much it for this chapter. Uh, we will be having a discussion topic on this, uh, so please have a look into the blackboard for this. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next chapter and to talk about it. Thank you.